Good morning. What, sadly, is the frequent reaction to the words of the prophet? Today we're at Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 7 through 9. Jeremiah gave his message. We, we saw what that was a little bit yesterday morning. Well, let's see what we get this morning. What's the reaction? We're going to read starting at verse 7. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. Now it happened when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, that the priests and the prophets and all the people seized him, saying, You will surely die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. Well, this is what Jeremiah was afraid of. And that's exactly what he got. Not a surprise. Remember, the, the institutions of the kingdom of Judah had become entirely corrupted, more or less entirely corrupted. The, the priesthood was corrupt. The prophets were mostly corrupt. Uh, the civic leaders were mostly corrupt. The people were given over to idolatry. I mean, everybody's scratching the next guy's back. Everybody is, the status quo is kind of like, we're just going to do things this way. And so, not to be unexpected, this was the reaction, uh, we're going to kill this guy. It's interesting how unity comes up. You know, the Sadducees and the Pharisees got into some unity about Jesus, right? What were they uniting about? We're going to kill this guy. And now here, this message from Jeremiah comes, and what are the, the, the false prophets and the priests and the civic leaders and the people, what are they all uniting on? Um, we're going to kill this guy. Rather than repent and return to God, they're going to unite to murder the prophet. Now, it's important to realize that Jeremiah came into this situation after what? Well, after he had faithfully delivered the word of the Lord. In fact, it says it right here for us in, um, in verse 8. When Jeremiah had made an end of speaking all that the Lord had commanded. See that? So he had been faithful. He had delivered everything. He hadn't rounded one corner. He hadn't put velvet on anything. Jeremiah had delivered the whole message just as God gave it to him to deliver. So interesting, it looks like he had been faithful of the trust that God had uh, had in him. So now here they are, all the people united against God, ironically, in, the, in the, the house of the Lord. And you know, in the moment here, it seems like the outcome couldn't be worse. Um, now it looks like he's going to die for being faithful. But there is an important piece here. And that piece is that he had been faithful. He had given every word. He hadn't given 98% or 91% of the message. Jeremiah had given the 100% the of God's message. And so Jeremiah knew that whatever happened, he was entirely in God's hands. He was entirely faithful. And that's a very important piece because now he's been entirely faithful with God. What do you think God's going to do for his servant? But I don't want to get too far ahead of the game here, but we'll see as the chapter goes on. It looks pretty grim right here, doesn't it? Uh, they're all united about killing Jeremiah. So... That's kind of where things are. But the prophet has been faithful. He's been a true servant of the Lord, a high God. And we'll see what happens next. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, again, we're looking at the example of your servant, Jeremiah the prophet. He did not diminish a word. He has been absolutely faithful in delivering the message you gave to him to give to them. What about us? Oh, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will convict us, that you will teach us, that you will help us that we will be just as true, no matter how high the stakes. There's a lot of higher stakes in Jeremiah's life here. It's the, it's the kingdom. It's, it's your purpose and your plan. So the stakes are very high. And Lord, for us down here at the end of time, uh, the stakes are, again, very, very high. Lord, we need your courage. Give us courage to serve you faithfully, no matter what happens, no matter how it looks in the moment. Lord, help us. Thank you for hearing our request, Lord, please. In Jesus' name, we ask you for strength and courage to do the right, though the heavens fall. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the best place that one can be, once if one has done all that God has asked them to do, and even if you've got hundreds of people in the room ready to kill you, you're in the best place you could possibly be because you've been faithful to God. And we'll see what God does next. God be with you today.